What do you do if you're bored? Because I think that is one of the most dangerous positions you can be in. This past week and weekend, since I have automated a lot of my business right now, I've not had to do any work. And I was actually searching for things to pass the time, whether it was finding something to watch or something to consume my attention for a prolonged period of time because I had nothing else to do. And at the end of those days, I just feel sluggish and miserable. We're opposed to when I have a full day of productive work of things that I know what to do and I'm actually doing it and actively working on something that is either bettering myself physically or expanding my business or my mental intellect. I just feel so much better. And so what do you actually do if you're bored and you don't know where to start? Because that's a, I was in that position for a long time. You say, okay, well, I know that I potentially want to make money online or start some sort of business, but I don't know where the hell to start. And you know, you can watch YouTube videos and all these things, but that doesn't feel productive. Where do you actually begin to get some sort of progress? I think that you really need to start by learning some sort of skill. And this is why I do pay for a lot of courses. I know a lot of, I actually talk down about them all the time, but if you are just starting out and you need to gain a skill in the most condensed format and the most informational dense process possible, I would watch all the YouTube videos on whatever niche you're interested in. And that can really be anything. And then whoever the top person in that space is that resonates with you the best. And the way that I would find a niche is just something that I already have an interest in. That can literally anything that you're into or anything that you maybe already know something about because of past job that you've had or something that your parents have done to or you have some sort of micro edge in that little community. And then I would find out everything I can about that subject. Because if you're bored, it's not like you're doing anything. I mean, this past weekend, I've, I have had nothing to do. I've had no work on my plate. I do all the work I need to, and I try and front load some work. But because I've built a good team in place, I have nothing right now. Until I take on more work and I expand my business and open up to new clients, I have nothing to do. And I mean, that's a good and bad problem to have. It's a great problem, but I am just, I'm bored. And I'm like, dude, I just want the time to go by until I can find uh, some other work. But there's definitely an information gap. If you don't have any skills, you need to patch that barrier as quickly as possible. And for me, if I'm thinking about it, a thousand dollars right now in my bank account provides nothing for me, especially if I was broke. What are you going to spend that money on clothes, food, doing, trying to pick up chicks or something? I, I, I don't know. Whatever people do when they have nothing really going on, I would just spend that thousand bucks on the best course I could find or however much money it is. And I would take it and I would avidly study it. But I know a lot of people who sell these types of things. And the reality is most people who buy an online product like that never even log on. They buy it to fulfill some sort of desire that they had in that moment and they feel productive by buying it and therefore they get the satisfaction from the purchase and they get that same dopamine hit. But you actually have to learn the skill or you will never be able to really make money from it. And so once I learned as much as I could, that is going to take a few weeks. It really will. A few weeks of working pretty much all day, every day. I would be seeing just every single article, every podcast, every book that I could get my hands on around this niche. And that actually fills the void of boredom because what I should be doing right now this weekend, I should just be learning something new and expanding my skill set and my knowledge gap. But I was just kind of being lazy until I will openly say I've been incredibly lazy this weekend. Just, just so if I was reading or listening to every book on some sort of subject that I want to learn right now, every single podcast that I could find, every single YouTube while doing some sort of course, taking avid notes and trying to reverse engineer what these people are doing and then finding the big businesses that actually do this niche and trying to see what they do and how that compares and contrasts to what I'm learning online and see what I can grab and how it's actually being implemented in real life examples and how I could implement that for some other business. And then I would be reaching out to businesses once I had some sort of skill set, telling them what I could provide for them. And so if I was bored and broke, Probably within a few months, you would have a 
very good enough skill set to where you could provide some value to some company doing some small niche. And you got to learn before you can do, but once you do, that's how you learn. But no one's going to take you on if you don't know anything. So, I mean, that's always <sighs> beneficial. And then if I was also bored, something that is just so important is your communication abilities. And when I'm lazy and scrolling on my phone, my communication and intellectual capacity is so low like it is right now. Just massive brain fog. You can't think of these uh real good sentences like you maybe usually can or you can't communicate them no matter how good your product is or no matter how good you are at something if you can't communicate what you can do for somebody else no one's ever going to take take a chance on you so practicing your communication skills is so crucial i was such a bad communicator and i would still consider myself maybe like a a c c plus but i was probably like a d minus i would stutter i would have just constantly say, uh, I wouldn't be able to look people in the eyes when I spoke to them. That's such an important thing, being able to have a stringent conversation, looking someone in the eyes and actually getting a feel for what is going on and being able to articulate the thought that you have and the value that you can provide. Because if you can't do any of that, these business owners are not going to take you seriously. And it doesn't really matter about age. It's, it's the confidence that comes with really communicating. So that's, that's something that everyone, everyone needs to learn. And I've never, at least I don't, I can't think of a very successful business owner that I've met that is a terrible communicator. And the reason for that is you, to run a business, you have to be able to address what somebody's role is going to be. And you are going to need to be able to communicate that in an effective manner. And if you can't do that, your employees wouldn't know what they're doing to a good degree. Uh, your company, you, it would be tough to really grow and expand and scale. So this is something in all aspects of life, even if you were just trying to go on a date or something, it's important to be able to know how to talk and not sound like an idiot, which I always did. And I, and I still do. I mean, it's still an uphill battle, but that's why you practice. That, that's one of the benefits of talking to a camera is you are forcing yourself to communicate. And so the way that I would try and learn, if I want to learn to the highest possible degree, just consuming alone is not good enough. You don't actually learn that much. If you read a book, you maybe only learn 10% of whatever you read. It's, it's probably even less than that. So the way that I like to do it is whenever I'm learning something, I will usually write it down in my notes app if I'm listening to a podcast or something. And if it's a, a really big subject, then I'll try and talk to you about it with a friend or I'll send a voice message to my buddy Luke about what I'm trying to think through. And then I'll just make a video on it. So I'm learning something. I'm Then I'm turning it into my own idea and forcing it through some sort of video. And there's no downside. Uh, views don't matter. And if you don't want to be on camera, then just record something and delete it afterwards. But you are... You don't know how little you know about a subject until you try and make a 10 minute video talking about that subject. You'll find out really quickly that you don't know what you think you knew, or you can't articulate what you do know, which is just as much of a problem. So you got to consume it and then you have to produce it back out or it just kind of get lost. So if you want to learn to the highest possible degree, for me, that's what I consider studying. Uh, taking notes and then actually articulating and making those ideas that I learned my own and trying to implement them.